I remember a really fun show we played in Madrid. There was one one girl, she was kind of big. Wow. And uh, she was like eager to come on stage, like to a point that like nobody and she was big, so she could like you had to you had to get like three securities to stop her because otherwise she's she, and Not then big fat, right? And she was wearing she was wearing the she like was at the cat suit. Uh, yeah like a weird cat suit but sort of transparent as well <laughs> and I, I think it got to a point where she was like like trying and then she jumped on she came on stage and then somebody pushed her out and then uh, like this happened for like five or six times already we already like used to her I was like yo might as well stay here and like instead of like because this is killing the dynamic of the show you know let us stay here like who cares and uh, and so I think. She was kind of there for a while, and then I think she she took her top off, yes. and uh, like she had like giant giant can't be boobs. And yeah. that that moment was kind of like, oh shit! Like, it was kind of like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you couldn't really, it, it, not in a good, not in a like not in a pleasant way, more in like what the fuck just happened <laughs> kind of kind of kind of way. It was in the afternoon. <laughs> no, no, no. It was in Madrid. It was in Madrid. But it was too much. Yeah, it was too much. <laughs> It was funny though. That's the. That was the best. Yeah, we had a couple of topless moments. Mm -hmm. I have lucky uh, sneakers for a show. I have to have this. But Otherwise it doesn't work. yeah, <laughs> there's like things. There are like a certain things that that. But like they change. It's like the the sneakers change with the season as well. I don't know. There's like three or four that are <laughs> yeah, that are like stage approved. I, I think I have like. Clothes that are like stage approved and then clothes that are just like everyday kind of stuff. I like to make the difference in my wardrobe, so I don't know. I'm not like the most superstitious guy on the planet, but I do feel that there's stuff that works on stage and there's stuff that works on going for breakfast at the hotel. Most food, I think Macau. Macau? Yeah, yeah Macau. we stayed in Macau for like eight days and it was complicated. We got, we got straight to McDonald's because... Nah, no, no. Uh, no. You ate Gilly Macau? Yeah. Oh, I did. I, I went to like a couple of restaurants. So. Oh, shit. I didn't. <laughs> and I was there longer than you. <laughs> nah, I just ate. For survival, basically. Survival food. We like to eat. I don't know. What, like, what, what, what I really like is when you get like to a city, like in the promoter takes you like, to this place that, that looks like legendary. You know, that kind of restaurant that's been around for ages and like people like local people go there like that's kind of the because you spend so you, you almost don't spend any time in cities so you don't get to see anything so the only thing if you can take an experience out of it and even if it's a restaurant experience or a, a meal then then like that's gonna be like that's gonna be really cool I think for all of us like yeah, being sure. in a place there like even if you don't like it completely it's like something that you know it's part of the city culture because like from what I don't respect is when you, uh, uh, promoter takes you to like some fast food place or stuff like that. Like I, I, I won't even go in on that. Okay, I'll go somewhere else. I don't know why. Maybe it's it's the African influence in Portugal, which is kind of big. But we're kind of used to spicy food, so it's. I think it's. I think it's mostly because. Um, I guess in America and in England and places like that, the food is so processed, yeah. and it's so uh, like a chicken doesn't kind of doesn't really taste like a chicken. A tomato doesn't taste like a tomato. And I think where we where we, where we all live in Lisbon, the food isn't as processed as here. Like if you go to a restaurant and you ask for a fish, you get the fish. You know, you don't get like fish nuggets. You get like the actual fish with bones, with with eyes, with everything, and then. So I think that gives us more of a like more of a, Just from that day. <laughs> a, a like a stronger like yeah, baggage yeah. like to, to, to be able to eat whatever and, and feel okay. I think he actually got diarrhea from American food yeah. Yeah. three days ago from meatballs. And it, it was at the airport and they were just lying there for a couple of hours maybe. The only place that was open was that one and just ate a meatball so I got sick for a day. I've been eating like Mexican food since then. Even in the States, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the revenge is not working. <laughs> I usually don't drink, but I've, I've played this show in Paris. I was completely, I was completely out of my mind. Um, for me, that's completely wasted without uh, losing the perception of what the drunk kid is. So that's my limit right there, because uh, I'm working. Like, 
I think it's like our shows are pretty fun and wild, and I think the later we play, the more like we want to keep on doing something after because that means we might have started drinking earlier. And so by, by the time we play, everything is more like lit up, and then we want the party to continue. Mostly when we play these shows where it's like, you know, the, like this regular like venue shows, like 9 to 10. I think usually everyone finishes at 10 and everyone's like pretty, ah yeah, I'm okay, I'm normal, I'm sober. Like you might go for some food and then like go to sleep. But if it's more, if it's a part of a longer night with other artists and stuff, you always end up like chilling backstage and then taking the party spot. Scott Walker, he's for me, he's a real unsung hero. Answer the same questions.